Tony Reyes, who is also from St. Edwards, the same university that uh, Gray attends. Tony is a senior and uh, his major is computer science. He said that he has a specialization in data analysis. So we will turn it over. Let me reset my timer and Tony, I will uh, start going on your time whenever you start talking. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, can everyone see the screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Perfect. Then, hello, everyone. It's great to see everyone here, and I'm excited to present this thing. I am Tony Reyes. I am a data science and software developer intern from San Jose University, and I come from Austin, Texas. And today I will be presenting about the development of a sample tracking app called Sample which is where I spent the 10 weeks of this internship this summer. So first to give some context, Sample is a sample tracking application that monitors the life over a, of over 100,000 samples each year. Now, uh, this is an already existing app. When I first came over, it was made and developed by a previous intern last year. But as I was new to R and new to data science, uh, working, fixing some bugs and making enhancements to this application worked as a great introduction to, to R, to the NEON team and to the NEON science, the, the NEON data. So very quickly, one of the things that the user can do is they would select a, a lab name, a lab service, domain, date range, et cetera. And they would get some general information about the samples. So you can see how many samples are in that specific location, how many of them are missing and how many of them are late. So what is the actual problem that I am solving? The thing with the samples is that all of the shipments that contain the samples can have some problems. A couple of the samples are not received. Some of them are just not accepted. And even if they are accepted, the samples can still have some problems. So here are some examples, for example, uh, damaged or a sample is warm or there's a leak or there's a mislabel, there's many more. And what the CLA team here at Neon already does is that they track all of these problem shipments in an Excel spreadsheet. And then when they start working on it with ServiceNow, they also keep track of all of that information. And after all of that, they are uh, then tasked to share all of this information to respective teams like PhD science, field science, quality and leadership teams. And so the goals of my internship was to develop a dashboard that would be used by the CLA team to keep track of all of the samples, as well as serve as a tool for, for all of the other teams that, that I said, so that they can just go into the dashboard, look at the problem shipments that they need to watch and check on the status and check on some extra information. Now, the dashboard itself had a couple of steps. So first, uh, Jim, my mentor and I had to create a database and move all of the existing CLA spreadsheet data into the database. Now, this is not completely up to date. I will go into this later. Uh, but after that, I developed a daily script job that would catch problem shipments by itself. One of the things that it will do is that it would check at the shipment itself, check if any samples of that shipment had any problems. And if it had, it would flag the problem shipment or the shipment as a problem shipment. And after that, I would finish creating an interactive dashboard for, for Neon. And now this is a much better explanation on how the daily job works and the scripts in general. But what I do is I get the shipment data from the Fulcrum API and the receipt data from message admin. I extract all of that data for that exact day that the job runs. And I would kind of guess and try and catch all the problem shipments. So based on the information that this data has, I will be able to see if a sample hasn't been received if it hasn't been accepted, or if there is a specific problem, as I said before, it might be warm or anything, I would guess the category of problem. So say the sample was warm, I would say that the category of the problem is cold chain broken. Or if there was a mislabel in the sample, it would be a manifest error. So all of this shipment information is stored in a problem shipments table. Now all of the sample level information, so if you wanna look at a specific shipment and see what exact samples had a problem, I created a problem samples table where I would start, store the data. The other two tables, shipments not received and received without shipments, 
are tables that catch uh, if there's any shipments that haven't been received yet, as well as if there's any receipt that does not have a uh, shipment ID, a matching shipment ID. Now the second table makes a, a bit less sense because how can we have a receipt but not a shipment? But the case is that there is. So I'm still flagging all of this information in case anyone ever wants to look at this data. And then for the shipment not received, if in a later day I get a receipt that matches the shipment, then I would just take it out of the shipments without receipt table. Now I will store all four tables in the database that Jim and I created. And that's what I will be displaying on the dashboard. So live demo time, I will go into the app very quickly. Can everyone tell me uh, thumbs up if you guys can see it? Perfect. So this is the dashboard of the application. Here at the top, you would get uh, three uh, value boxes. So for the past 90 days, how many problem shipments were there? How many problem samples were there? As well as the, the problems resolved. Now, the number right now is zero because I don't have the most up-to-date data from the CLA team. But as long as I run the first script one more time with all the newer data, that number should go up by a lot. And then here at the bottom, I have a table called problem shipments and three different buttons. So this is the problem shipment displaying dashboard. Here I can see the shipment ID, the shipment date, the domain, lab, data part code, the problem, service now information, the message UUID, et cetera. And some pretty neat things that you can do on the dashboard is you can select a specific date range, you can select some specific domains or labs or data product codes and more information like this. Also, if you want to search for something specific, you can just click on search and type it in. And if for some reason the daily script not catch a problem shipment, you still have the ability to add one manually, which would be this uh, form that you will be able to fill out. Now, I already did this for the sake of time, which is the, domain, the shipment here that we see with a test number one. But say I wanted to edit it, I messed up the domain. If there's a problem, I can change this. I can add data to the service now. I can open it, for example, if there's a ticket and stuff like that. I can click Submit, and it will update the database as well as the dashboard. So now we have the correct domain, and we have on the status, it should say Open. Then if for some reason the row is incorrect, I can also just click Delete. I would get the information of the to make sure of the shipment that I want to delete. I will confirm, and then it will be gone. And the other very neat feature is that, as I said before, there is a problem samples table, which is the sample level data of each shipment. So if I wanted to click on a specific shipment, and then I go down, problem samples would contain the samples that have problems for that specific shipment. So here we will have some extra information. Sample ID, the analysis, some of the remarks, and the category of the problem. Now, this is just a very good example. All three of them have the same problem. But if I click maybe on a different one, hopefully, yeah, here there's only one sample. And the condition is that it was damaged, the remark was broke and froze. And so the category of problem would be the sample was not accepted. Now, on the other tab of the problem shipments dashboard is the other two tables that I said before that were there which is one of the shipments that haven't been received yet. So here you have them with its tracking number for any reason. You can still do the same thing of searching in there. And the receipts without shipment, here is where you would see all the receipts that don't have a matching shipment that might be worth looking into. Let me go back to the presentation. Oh. So biggest challenges. Biggest thing was uh, it was my first real experience working with large data sets as well as working with scientific data. So there was a lot of different problems with that at the start. It was hard to sanitize it and standardize it because on one side, there was sometimes a lot of missing information that is very important or that I needed like an ID. And then there was also some inconsistency in information. So a sample could be, could be called, oh, warm, which I know is a temperature issue, but at the same time, it could not say that it's warm, but it could say a specific Celsius degree temperature, which was fun to figure out. And then there's also the receipts without shipments table that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I still have them there. 
And as I said before, working with Neon Data, especially as a completely software focused intern, has been fun. I, I, there was a, a big back and forth with my mentor, Jim, to kind of figure out what information to keep, what information to ignore, et cetera, et cetera. And because of this, there is the other problem that I had to spend so much time on the scripts to figure the data out because there was a lot of variables that I did not have as much time as I would have wanted for the dashboard. So there's still, that was a, a challenge as well to have the dashboard uh, up and running. And I have the 1990 rule, which I want to very quickly explain, I think greatly represents how it was for me working on data. But it says that once you believe you've done 90% of the work, it means you still have 90% left to do. So next steps. <laughs> now, uh, as I said before, I couldn't do a lot of work for the dashboard. So there's still some more enhancements to make to the dashboard itself. And one of them could be, for example, adding better statistics or better value boxes or more dynamic information there if you want to see the amount of problem shipments in the past, in the summer, to choose that month. That would be a very nice enhance enhancement to make. And then on the other one is to track left to lab and left to archive shipments. Right now, it's only focused on the main shipments. Now, the next steps would be to have more people test the app and find all of the errors or bugs that I might have made and launch the app once it's finally ready to roll. And in the future, it will be amazing to have ServiceNow integrated. It would lessen the work of the CLA team a lot more. And I know that Neon is interested in AI, so I want to be transparent on how, as an intern, I had the experience using the chat with Annie for Mattel. So the first thing is uh, learning R from scratch. The AI was a great tool to kind of get introduced to R. It helped me a lot with the libraries because there's thousands of libraries. And I think even if I worked for like 10 years, I would still learn more about libraries in R. And it would help me a lot just with syntax because R shiny is very different than R. So that was also very fun to learn. And after I learned a little bit about R and still uh, and data, one of the other things that I used was uh, use AI to troubleshoot errors. Sometimes the error logs were more ciphers than errors. So I would ask the AI like, okay, here's this error. What does this mean? And it would give me some recommendations like, oh, you should, this probably usually means that you have a problem in this part of, you should probably check this type of code, which most of the time would work great if I was stuck. But I do want to end on a very positive note. I learned so much in this internship. On one side, sanitizing and standardizing data is now engraved in my blood and sweat and tears. And at the same time, getting so comfortable working with large data sets and analyzing data has made me feel much more confident. And just as Gray said, uh, Gray said, working and focusing on data analyzing is something that I am now very interested in. And on the software development part, well, I learned R and some of its libraries and packages. I also further expanded my knowledge on version control, so Git. And I learned new technologies like the Postgres database, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and Docker containers. And last but not least, acknowledgments. Uh, if I could spend a lot more time here, I would, but I can't. I very briefly want to mention that uh, working with the mentors here has been super pleasant, especially Jim, who met with me daily and had to listen to my data problems. So thankful for that because he made me learn so much. I also want to give some special thanks to the CLA team. Thanks to their insight and patience, I was able to develop a plan with them and a time frame to kind of develop the, the dashboard. So without their insight, the dashboard would simply not be possible. I also want to say a big thank you to Gray and Bola, my fellow interns. They have been super pleasant to work with and always up to help each other. And last but not least, Neon. Working with Neon has been very fun. It has been, everyone has been very warm and welcoming. So that has been a very pleasant experience for an intern. And thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you, Tony. I'll ask the same question that I asked Gray, um, you know, being a computer science major, but working on a data science project, what is the most important or newest or most exciting tool that you think you're going to take with you in the future and your career path? And do you think that this internship has kind of pushed you more towards a data science career or more away from it? 
Yeah, so if I'm talking about tools, I think R and some of its libraries are great for managing data, cleaning it, standardizing it, all of that are super, super helpful. But at the same time, not even the tool, but just the practice of working with large data sets, especially scientific data sets, which is a whole different world for me. I think uh, not as a technological tool, but as a practice tool, just learning how to read that and how to work with it has been super, super helpful. And as Gray said, I am very inclined now to focus on data analysis. I realize I enjoy it as much pain as it put me through to kind of figure it out. So I am hoping, well, next semester I will do the data science certificate. And I'm hoping that I do as good as I did on the internship. Good. Yeah, I definitely feel that um, all the pain that it causes, it's nice to have a nice clean script at the end of the day. It makes you feel good or a nice clean data set at the end of the day. Great. Uh, any other last minute questions for Tony or any of our other interns?